Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Safiya, your host. We're here in the main prayer hall of the Islamic Information Center, home of Let the Quran Speak. We have just begun a new year of the Islamic calendar, the year 1435. The first month is called Muharram, and the 10th of Muharram is of particular importance to Muslims. What is historically significant about the 10th of Muharram, and why do Sunni and Shiite Muslims understand and commemorate it differently? We'll be exploring those questions with Dr. Shabir Ali. Brother Shabir, it's a new year. What do Muslims do to celebrate or commemorate this? Mm -hmm. Well, th there is no p particular religious observation that uh, specifically marks the new year, meaning the first day of the first month. However, the new year um, is important to Muslims in that it reminds them uh, of the fact that the calendar of Islam uh, is um, uh, following from the Hijra, the migration of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is important because the uh, first month of the M Muslim calendar is uh, generally regarded as a sacred month. It's called Muharram, which means uh, sacred. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tenth day of the month is observed by fasting. It is uh, said to be a special day, going back to a, a history which is a little bit obscure now. But it is mentioned in some uh, uh, hadiths that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, found the Jews of Medina fasting on that day. And uh, he decided also to fast, and he encouraged his followers to fast. Mm -hmm. And I understand that if you do fast on that day, your sins are forgiven. Can you explain what happens if you fast? Yes, it is mentioned that uh, the sins uh, of uh, the previous year uh, are forgiven uh, for a person fasting on that day. And, and that simply means that God is um, out looking for excuses to forgive people. Uh, we, we do sin, uh, sometimes uh, inadvertently, sometimes uh, deliberately, sometimes big sins, sometimes very small ones. Uh, but uh, in many different ways we do commit sins. We're human beings and that's in the nature of human beings to err. And uh, it is in the nature of God to forgive. And so he, there are many different occasions on which, uh, and for very little uh, excuses, God forgives sins. And this is one of those occasions. Uh, if one were to fast on that day, uh, he or she is promised that uh, all of the sins for the previous year would be forgiven. Mm -hmm. It seems like Sunnis and Shiites fast for very different reasons on the same day. And can you explain why that's so? Uh, for she is the day acquires its great importance from uh, the uh, fact that uh, Imam Hussein, uh, the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, uh, passed away on this day. Rather, they would say he was martyred. Um, in fact, the history is such that one would say he was massacred. Mm -hmm. uh, he and his uh, entourage on this on this day. So, can you give us a little bit of background? Tell us what actually happened. Sure. Uh, to, to give you the, the full picture here, I have to start with the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He died. He did not appoint a uh, successor uh, to lead the temporal affairs uh, after him. But Muslims uh, eventually rallied around Abu Bakr, and uh, after Abu Bakr's death, uh, he being the first caliph now, uh, he appointed Omar to uh, follow on. Uh, Omar, uh, on, uh, uh, before his death, appointed a committee of six persons. Uh, including Uthman and Ali, and these six were to uh, decide who was to be his successor. Uh, Uthman was eventually chosen to be, out of these six, uh, was chosen to be the next caliph in line, and so he was third. Mm -hmm. And uh, fourth, eventually, was uh, Ali. Mm -hmm. uh, Ali was the cousin and also the son-in-law of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, now, uh, Ali's caliphate was in some way challenged by Muawiyah, who was a companion of the Prophet and by this time governor of Syria. Uh, Muawiyah, uh, on the death of Ali, assumed full uh, control of the caliphate, especially since uh, the uh, older son of Ali, Al-Hassan, uh, accepted a peace treaty with Muawiyah and he retired uh, to live in, in Medina, away from all political activity. Uh, Muawiyah, before his death, uh, uh, appointed his son Yazid mm -hmm. uh, to take over. This and was a new way of appointing caliphs now. Yes, this would be for the first time in Islamic history where uh, the uh, father appoints his son to mm -hmm. take over the leadership after him. Uh, and that has started a dynasty from which uh, we, are, we are still uh, seeing the effects. Uh, to this day, mm -hmm. um, where the kingship is passed on from father to son. 
Yazid, however, was not uh, uh, known to be a very good Muslim. In fact, uh, it is mentioned in uh, the book Tariq al Khulafa by Imam Jalaluddin al Suyuti uh, that uh, some of the uh, traditions about Yazid say that he was given to much wine drinking, mm -hmm. among some other sins that they mention about him. Um, well so my neither Sunni or Shiites would be happy, would have been happy with Yazid then? Precisely. Okay. Uh, so about this time then, uh, this was about the, the year 680 um, uh, of our current uh, era, uh, when uh, Yazid was uh, given the, the rulership after his uh, father. And uh, now Hussein, the younger grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, decided to challenge his caliphate. Uh, Hussein was in Mecca by this time, but he had received many letters of support from the people of Kufa. And uh, with this in mind, he marched towards Kufa to gather his troops and eventually to cha challenge the Syrian-based uh, caliphate um, of Yazid. Uh, but uh, when he uh, went to Kufa, he realized that the people there were all talk but no walk. Mm. And uh, so he was left out on the lurch to face uh, Yazid's uh, overwhelming uh, force uh, with only a small entourage. Mm -hmm. um, it so happens that he had taken with him on this trip uh, his family as well. So we had uh, women and children also. And so there's, uh, there's some suggestion that he knew he was going to die. Uh, when he went out. Can you explain what happened there? Is that, is that yes. correct? Mm, one view that is given um, um, by some analysts uh, suggests that he, he knew he was going to be massacred uh, at Karbala, which is a little northeast uh, of northwest of, uh, of Kufa. Uh, but he went out anyhow um, uh, to face the enemy, uh, perhaps to uh, let his passion be a, a reason for the awakening of the, uh, of the consciousness of the Muslim community, for them to realize the extent uh, of the evil uh, that could be inflicted upon the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him, by some who are uh, lacking the scruples uh, that would qualify them for good government in an Islamic sense. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess when, when Shiites remember this day, it, it's, it's with great sorrow and sadness, you know, They're, and, and grief, I guess, because uh, one of their great leaders passed away. Yes. And was actually killed mm -hmm. in, a, in a very gruesome way. True. Uh, some go to the extent of self-flagellation to remember the, the uh, sorrow and, and the grief and pain of uh, al-Imam uh, al-Hussein, but uh, we, we don't recommend going to that. In fact, our, uh, in, in among Sunnis, we live by the hadith which says, la darra wa la dirar, there should be no harming of oneself or harming others. So our bodies are trusts from God, we should preserve it and not harm it in any way. And, and to put things in a broader perspective, uh, we, while, while we all feel for the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and for Hussein in particular, uh, we know that in, uh, in our traditions it is mentioned that uh, uh, there were prophets in, in old times who were sought in two. Mm. Uh, and, and many other prophets received some gruesome punishment uh, from the part of people who did not believe in them. Uh, but what are we to do as a result? Uh, to feel their pain, and we wouldn't recommend for anyone to saw himself. Uh, obviously this is unthinkable. Uh, but uh, we live their message onwards. Uh, we, we live as they lived and we uh, become the good moral examples that they were. I think that's what Shiites are also trying to do. They're trying to, um, to fight against oppression. Uh, to help those who are weak um, or vulnerable. And, and, and that's sort of the message that they're bringing uh, from the martyrdom of uh, Imam Hussein. True, true, and we all respect that. The other thing that uh, we, we should bear in mind, again, keeping the broader perspective, is that uh, the emphasis on the love of the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, should be part of that bigger picture. Uh, and the bigger picture is that uh, in the history of the Prophets, there have been many uh, Prophets who have had close relatives who were not believers with them. We see this in the case of Noah uh, with his son. We see this in the case of Abraham with his father and so on. Uh, the, the, the division was not so much between my family and the rest of the world. It was those who believe with me, they are family. Mm -hmm. and, and those who disbelieve, they are the outsiders. Uh, they often sometimes attack the prophets of God. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not an exception to this in that there were some close relatives of his who were his opponents. Um, 
so, so we don't make that uh, broad categorization of saying, okay, all is family, therefore all good. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, on the other hand, we do not exclude his companions and his, uh, the rest of his family who were not his blood relatives. For example, his wives. Uh, some emphasize the love of the Prophet and his family to the extent that they think that the love should be extended only to the blood relatives of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And so they may exclude his wives from that category. Whereas the Quran itself in the 33rd chapter addresses the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and refers to them as Ahlul Bayt, mm -hmm. people of the house, which is the title used to refer to the family of the Prophet that people consider to mean only his blood relatives. So if we miss that point about his wives being also his blood relatives, we're missing something important from the Quran. Moreover, the Quran tells us in the same chapter that the wives of the Prophet are the mothers of the believers. So we respect them and, and we love them. Uh, moreover, the Quran shows that those who were with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his close followers and sincere companions uh, are, are good models uh, for us to follow as well. And so Muslims, uh, at least Sunnis do, generally uh, respect and, and love the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as well, even though they were not his blood relatives, but they were true and sincere followers. Mm -hmm. Now, given that both Sunni, Sunnis and Shiites fast on this day, is there any sort of uh, reconciliation or coming to, together that we can think of uh, based on on their shared practice? Well, for Sunnis, this day is important uh, in that uh, this day marks the day on which the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, fasted, and so mm -hmm. Muslims are copying his good example. Uh, it is mentioned also that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that if he lives uh, the following year, he would add a day to it. So for that reason, many Muslims fast both on the ninth day of the month and also on the tenth day of the month, which is the real day. And uh, in, in the Muslim traditions, it is mentioned variously that uh, the uh, people uh, before Islam used to fast on this day, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, naturally fasted on this day as well. And, and it is more specifically mentioned that Jewish people uh, fasted on, on this day, though there is some uh, uh, question about what exactly in the Jewish calendar does this day correspond to. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, for example, in the Jewish encyclopedia, it is mentioned that this day corresponds to uh, the Day of Atonement, uh, Yom Kippur, uh, which occurs on the 10th day of the seventh month. And, and this fast for the Muslims is on the 10th day of the first month. Uh, and how, how the two corresponded, this is a matter of, uh, of history. Uh, because sometimes there was a change in the calendar. A month was added to, give, to, to uh, make the lunar year correspond to the solar year. So that leaves an open question. Uh, there is also a mention in the hadiths that when the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked the Jews why they were fasting, they said this is the day on which God had rescued Moses and his people from the domination of the Pharaoh and oppression of, of the Pharaoh. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, we are closer to Moses and therefore we will also uh, fast on this day. Mm -hmm. So whether this refers to, the, to, to Passover, which occurs in the first month of the year, as now Muharram for Muslims is the first month of the year, that too now becomes uh, an open question. But for, for Sunnis then, this, the significance of this day goes way back. And to Moses then? Uh, even to Moses, peace be upon him. Uh, and uh, for, for Shi'is, obviously the great importance of this day is that Hussein was martyred on this day. The fact that both Sunnis and Shi'is recognize this as a very important and sacred day uh, is one of the uh, meeting points of, uh, of Sunnis and Shi'is. <laughs> right, very nicely put. Thank you for that, Bashir. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, we will look at the spirit of Hajj. <laughs> 